Hey, what's happening, guys? We're going to take a look today at why, or why not, you would want to use AC or DC coupling on your oscilloscope. <clears throat> There's a lot of reasons for it, and uh, I'm going to show you a couple of simple examples. So let's start out with, I've got my function generator set for a uh, 60 hertz sine wave, 10 volts, peak to peak. And so I'm going to probe that circuit right here. And if you look, you can see the uh, 60 hertz down there on the bottom right in the frequency counter area. You can see the sine wave. And actually, if I bring up the measurement window, you can see our peak to peak is, you know, 9.2 volts. So close enough, right? All right, so let's rect half let's half wave rectify that signal. So there's our half wave rectified signal still at 60 hertz. We've simply taken away the negative component of the signal. Nothing special, right? And again, we're DC coupled here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a capacitor in parallel with our little mini power supply. And when we measure, we get an almost flat line. Okay? So that doesn't give us very much information. It's just telling us we have for all intents and purposes, a DC voltage. But what happens if we AC couple that circuit now, increase our resolution? Pardon me, I know I'm bumping the camera. Hold on a second, folks. I gotta move something. Okay. So there we are now. It still looks like we have our half wave rectified. It doesn't even look like that capacitor is in there, but it is. And what we've done by AC coupling the circuit is we have blocked the DC component of our signal. And all we are seeing is the AC component. So all this mess that you're seeing on the scope here is just the AC part of the signal riding on top the DC part of the signal. Very useful to see that in a lot of circuit applications. Okay, so you've got the explanation behind it. Now let me see if I can give you a more practical demonstration of it so that you can process the information better. What I've got here is a 9 volt battery. We are DC coupled to the scope, so the scope basically acts like a voltmeter. Our vertical axis is volts. This is time. So when I touch the probe to the positive, we get a spike, we get a pulse, whatever you want to call it. And there you go, we're getting our 9 volts. That's in DC mode. Now, if I come over here and couple this to AC, hold on a second. You're all probably laughing, going, you turn the channel off. I know. It only took me about 30 seconds to figure out what I did wrong. But okay, so now we're AC coupled. Same battery, same probe, same oscilloscope. Watch what happens when I touch the probe now. Hmm. What does that look like? Let me put it in single shot mode for us. Okay. Now let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit better what 
What is that a characteristic of? Right there. Anyone? George? Bob? Davey? Carl? No one? Okay. That is a capacitive discharge curve. So when we AC couple this channel of the scope, we're simply putting a capacitor in between the probe and the front end of the scope. And there you can see it right there. When we're DC coupled, this wire goes directly into the front end of the scope. What's the main characteristics of a capacitor? Blocks DC, passes AC. So there you have it. AC coupling versus DC coupling in your oscilloscope. Got it? Pretty easy. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give the old professor a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Yeah.